Hi, I'm Miller and welcome to another Miller's Game Room video. In this video, we're going to talk about Switch ports, aka games that really should have been on the platform by now. Now, this video is not going to be a wish list video. It's going to be a list of games and series where if I tell you it's not on Switch, you'll be like, hmm, that makes no sense. Why hasn't it been done yet? And you don't have to like all these games. There are some here I certainly am not a fan of. So let's just get straight into it. And it's going to mostly be JRPGs, but there's a couple of these novels and one other game that's in a different genre, which definitely sums up Switch ports in a nutshell and things that should have come over. So we'll begin. Please like, comment, subscribe. Algorithm boosting stuff. I really appreciate it, especially now I'm uh, on a bi-weekly schedule and I'm really trying to focus on quality over quantity, uh, even more so than before, to free up more time for the retrospective videos because I love doing those. So moving on to the list. Soul Hackers 2. This is Atlas's 22 RPG that really, really pushed to try to revitalize the Soul Hackers spin-off series. It unfortunately did not do super well, and the reason why, well, one of the reasons why, was the lack of a Nintendo Switch version. This game launched for all major platforms except the Switch, which is so bizarre and strange, and sums up a lot about Atlas's approach to the platform throughout the console's life. Soul Hackers 2 does have a few other controversies. One of them is the DLC that was before launch is ridiculous. Then there was also the general mixed reception of the game as well when it came to our platforms. And I believe this could and should have been saved with a Switch version. And if you had a Switch version that was a late port, which was still possible, but not a DLC in and release that next year, it would have done a lot better. Now, dungeon crawlers like Soul Hackers generally play better on handhelds too. So aside from Switch, there was the Steam Deck, which the game has done decently on Steam despite its mix of reviews. So it could have worked really well on the Switch. And now Sega and their like financial reports from earlier this year were like, yeah, we don't really consider this a core pillar anymore, which is what they were trying to push Soul Hackers to as. Means we're probably not gonna see anything else from this series for a long time, but if you really wanna save this series in the near future, bring it to Switch. Number two is Sacra Wars 2020. This is a PS4 exclusive RPG. Yeah, we're having one of those on the list. This was the reboot of the Sacra Wars series that changed it from a visual novel strategy RPG hybrid to more of a 3D open world. Well, not open world, but like full modeled areas with action RPG segments. And those who have played the game have really enjoyed it, but was lamenting its PS4 exclusivity because again you're releasing a PS4 exclusive game and didn't even come to PC and Sega are like really big on the PC they were big on the PC before a lot of the other niche companies as well and it just makes no sense not if bring it to PC and not even for Switch as well so why didn't this one come to Switch apparently the game had a bit of a divisive reception in Japan as well most likely because of the change in format from a vision of SRPG hybrid like the previous games to this action RPG hybrid that, from what I've heard, is really good in its own right, but was not what fans of the older games really wanted. And it's a shame, and I think that was why Sega decided not to port the game to the Switch, which is a shame because I think the game, given it's a vision novel, would have performed better on the Switch too. And like, if you don't release your vision novel on Switch, it's practically not gonna do super well, especially PS4 stuff, but we move. Moving on to a proper visual novel now, we have the Zero Escape Trilogy. Now, if you know anything about visual novels, this is pretty self-explanatory. Spike Chunsoft's one of two flagship visual IPs outside of Japan, the other being Danganronpa, which was also quite a late Switch port. That only came to the console a couple of years ago. But Zero Escape should be there already as well, because it's an easy port for them to do in terms of that. They're guaranteed to make some money off it because it is the Switch. It is the ultimate visual novel platform. And yes, the series is on both Nintendo handhelds, the Vita, as well as PS4 and PC, so it's still widely accessible, but it makes no sense not to put this on the Switch at this point. Like, even Danganronpa, which was on the same platforms, well, the same Sony ones anyway, and PC, that got ported, and that seemingly did very well on the Switch, but yet you couldn't port this as well? Like, why? If I had to make a guess, it would probably be because of Zero Time Dilemma's more decisive reception, because apparently, from what I've heard, when people were at first found out about the PS4 port of Zero Time Dilemma, there was basically no hype because fans were just kind of, eh. So maybe we might not see ports again, but you never know. I think this will, I think this one might actually happen, especially as Spike Chunsoft are 
more into localizing their visual novels and older games themselves like they released 428 which also should be on the switch as well but that was that's a whole different game and that's not going to be mentioned in this video again because well, it's not on the list but still there and and also Kenka Banto Terme because that got announced for a Chinese release by Just Dan for the switch and it's like Spike please like you've got your chance to remedy yourself for that poll which was a complete disaster for you and your company when you were starting out in the west Yes, yeah, so Otemi fans, it's all salty. Next set of ports, which might actually happen, the Trails in the Sky trilogy. Now, as I've touched on in other videos, especially my fan translation videos, Trails has an accessibility problem. Of all the games on this list, Trails in the Sky trilogy is the one I believe is most likely to happen in the next couple of years. Falcom themselves have teased it lots of times. There's been those of teasers. Some people think it's a full remake, but I'm pretty certain these are just gonna be ports. And that's fine. The games just need to be re-released on modern platforms and the Trails series in general, the ideal starting point for the story is Trails in the Sky. That's what many fans consider to be the optimal point. You have a minority of elitists, which are like you must play Sky for anything else, which are basically the Trails equivalent of visual novel fans who are diehard on PC, which, yeah. But even releasing Sky on Switch, like it should have been years ago, will placate everyone from across the fandom and bring Trails to all platforms again. As well as PS4 and 5, Switch, Switch 2, it will do well and then we'll finally have all the games available on the Switch. As well as Cold Steel 1 and 2 via a fan translation patch because those are not getting localised. They're not getting localised at this point because they're not by Falcon. A lot of people think they're by Falcon but no they're not. They're by Clouded Left Brain Entertainment so they won't happen, you'll have to patch them. Now number five is going to be another trilogy which shouldn't be surprising to you once I say what it is. Underwater Ray Romano. Oh wait, no. Utawa Erimono. This is Aqua Plus's flagship visual IP. I've talked about this one before. I did a whole video last year on Aqua Plus and why they've not supported the Switch yet, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much. I have to go watch that because I still stand by that. I still believe it's going to happen, but most relevant to Utawa Erimono as to why it really should have happened by now. Their visual novels, they are Aqua Plus's most popular games. The games are not even available digitally in the West anymore. Well, Prelude is. But Deception and Truth aren't because Atlas localized those and the licensing deal for those expired like four years ago and they just never renewed it. And they're not coming back at this point and with those games getting pricier, you, you need to re-release them and the Switch would be the perfect place to put them. And a lot of people in the visual novel RPG communities don't think it's going to happen at this point because why didn't they do it before? But that goes to show how baffling it is. There's also Monochrome Mobius as well, which I don't count here. Not because it's not a new Tower Romano game, because it is, but because of the unique developmental circumstances relating to that series and that game, which is why the game was a bit of a technical mess at launch. If it's going to be a mess on the PS4, it's probably going to be a mess on the Switch, but yeah, I'm, uh, that's new Tower Romano, it should be on there. They're fantastic games, but outside of PC, you can't easily get them nowadays, aside from PS4 physical copies, which are expensive, so we need them released again for accessibility. And there's still many years left of the Switch's life, so it's perfectly possible. Next one is also going to be an Act Plus game, and that's Dungeon Travelers. This controversial dungeon crawling series. This is the last Act Plus game I'm going to mention in the video, by the way. And the reason why is because this game has one of the most unique circumstances out of all the games in this list. The trilogy got ported to PC, but only the first Dungeon Travelers is actually on Steam. And Dungeon Travelers... Dungeon Shadows 2 and the sequel, 2-2, which 1 and 2-2 were localized for the first time with these PC ports. But because 2 and 2-2 are not on Steam, their ban was pretty high profile. That's got a whole can of stuff, which I'm not going into. But unless these games come to Switch, this series is basically finished. And that's the T, because without the Steam exposure you get with 2 and 2-2, people aren't going to buy these ports. Or if they do, they're going to, well, they're gonna to have to deal with awful deodorant. And that's the reality, whereas with Switch, it would easily sell because there is a market. It makes no sense to re-release these games and not put them on Switch. And out of all the other consoles, because of its controversial content, only the Switch is really where it can go. Aside from mobile, but even then you might have issues with the App Store, but I just be honest, would you buy a dungeon crawl on mobile phones? I think not. Plus also, given that 2 and 2.2 2 aren't on Steam, I'd go as far as to argue they're de facto Japanese exclusive, which they're on DMM, they're on Joran, but let's be honest, you don't use Joran in the West, do you? No, not really. 
it can be done, it should be done, because if you want to secure this series at Plus, you got to put them on the Switch. And even if you don't believe that the Switch is a viable system for your games, like I think is the case, you gotta accept reality at some point, it's as simple as that. Moving away from that Dumpster Fire series, we have a Dumpster Fire port, Kingdom Hearts. But wait, they're already on Switch. Actually, yes, you are technically correct, but they're only available via a cloud release, which basically means they're not on Switch for most people because the port is the cloud version. There are technical limitations of having a cloud port and a lot of people really were disappointed back in the day that Square Enix released one of the most popular series under their umbrella on the Switch as a cloud version. So most people can't even play them. And even those who can buy the game run cloud, apparently it's not even the best port either. So this series is de facto not on the Switch at all. And this is why you see some people joke about, oh, is it on Switch? No, it's actually not. So people act as if it's not on the Switch because that is the reality. And at this point, it's safe to say it was Square Enix not treating these ports the best because you had Kingdom Hearts come to Steam recently, which are fantastic ports, by the way. I recommend them on there. You've also got Switch ports that are also good, like Nier Automata. That's a fantastic port as well. I've not played it, but I've heard good things. It's one of those miracle Switch ports. So I think it could have been possible at least for 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8. 3 maybe might still have to be a cloud version regardless, but there was really no excuse for just bundling all of them on the cloud. Like, you should have put proper effort, time, resource into these ports. And it's never too late to do it over. Or at least you're not going to do it, put them on Switch 2 within the first couple of years of that system's life. Number 8 is not going to be a series, but it's also going to be kind of niche, and that's Oz Mafia Vibase. Now, for those who don't know, visual novels on the Switch have really had a boom of multi-language ports in Japan, and one of these companies is Dramatic Create Stroke Kutene X. Oz Mafia Vibase was the, the first Otome port that Dramatic Create put out just before they started the multi-language releases with Steam Prison. So they've never gone back to it. And this particular game was released on PC in 2016. Not the Vivace content that's got exclusive stuff such as full voice acting and extra scenes. That's exclusive to this version. But on PC, that version came over. It had a mostly positive reception. A lot of people who've played it, some people absolutely love it, some people hate it. I've not played it because again, I want full voice acting and want it on Switch preferably. So that's why I've not played it, but I know a lot of people will, do want to see it, and in terms of Otome, I believe it should happen. Uh, Dramatic Crate and Hunei X have gotten better at surpriseness with new releases, so I'm hoping if they're able to play ball with the licensor, Pony Pache, who developed the original game, I believe we'll see this. Now, of every game on this list, I actually think this is the left field pick for a realistic port, because Os Mafia Vives actually has a fan disc announced. So, much like Steam Prison Beyond the Steam, which is another release by UniX as well, it's quite possible we might see a surprise port of the game in English later on in the next couple of years. And after all the game's already done, you've just got to go back and obviously technical stuff, translate the text and negotiate licensing. So I think it could actually happen. And let's hope it does. If you've played Oz Matthew Vives, let me know your thoughts in the comments below because this particular game I actually think is a really viable out of left field pick. Number nine, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Now this one is another one that needs no introduction, but if you know anything about this game, you will know that, well, it's the one and only Xenoblade game that's not on the Switch. And this one arguably needs it the most because it was a Wii U exclusive. It still is a Wii U exclusive. And I have not played it. I've played all the others, but not this one. It's possible that we could end up getting it either on the Switch in the late years of its life or on the Switch 2, but Monolith have been like, yeah, we're not sure we can actually do it yet, and I imagine if they go back to it, they might potentially want to rework a few things because whether it could be retconned into the main series or whether it could still continue to be its own thing or a sequel, we need to see it on a platform where people will actually buy it, and like, it makes sense to port it. Why hasn't it been done yet? It, it needs to be on a modern platform that people play, and if not the Switch, Switch 2. Plus also, as somebody who has loved the other three Xenoblade games and the related stories and content for them, I would love to play this game that takes a much more different perspective on the open world design in a way that only Xenoblade 3 really came close to. There's always lots of value in digging up these older games and re-releasing them on platforms. And some people have already even considered Xenoblade X to be superior to the other Xenoblade games, which is a 
kind of wild at first glance. Final example in this video, Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah, this is the actual out of left field example because you can not like wrestling AAA games, you can love GTA, it doesn't matter what side of the scale you're on, but it's really strange that Rockstar Games has never ported their best-selling game and one of the best-selling games of all time to the Nintendo Switch. Like, it makes absolutely no sense because, like, it's easy money and with the Switch allowing for cross-platform play with Xbox and PC, like, it's... It, it makes no sense you'd want to turn that and Rockstar Games in general have been mostly focusing on GTA 5 and GTA Online so it makes sense to port that to get extra players from a massive fan base and given that the Switch is around as powerful as a PS4 and an Xbox series or Xbox One sorry it should be okay to run technically but again I'm not a technical expert but I think it's definitely more possible especially given the games were originally for the PS3 but I think at this point, this one isn't likely to happen because Rockstar are going full steam ahead on GTA 6, which is going to become one of the next best selling games ever, which I for one will probably not be getting it, but I am, uh, I'm not the majority of people in that respect. And if you're looking forward to GTA 6, I hope you have a great time and the game's made with love and care, but you know, that's for another time. And also for another time is maybe a potential part two or similar list of things like this. Maybe a, maybe I should do an actual wish list port list at some point, an actual list of stuff that's never gonna happen to counter this instead of this more realistic list. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that. Also, let me know what games you believe should have come to the Switch by now. It doesn't have to be RPGs or VNs, it can be another left field pick like GTA 5. There are still so many to talk about and well, even Riven Paradise. There's one, Nintendo, why is that on the Switch? And Tomodachi Life is another one, which I've not played, but I have my own thoughts on that, which I'll save for another time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, do the usual algorithm boosting stuff. Consider becoming a channel member if you can do so, and all too. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.